Darth Maul was the ferocious Sith assassin with dreams of grandeur and power, but what if Maul managed to become the Emperor of the entire galaxy? This is your last opportunity to join us. Quiet! We are the Black Sun! Hmm. Very well then. So you may be thinking, how would Maul ever manage to become the Emperor? Well, granted it's incredibly unlikely, but not necessarily impossible in my mind. Firstly, I'd recommend that you go and see what happens after Maul's defeat on Mandalore with Savage Press at the hands of Darth Sidious. Now, I've left a link in the description to go to a video that I made about this, just so you're definitely caught up, because it was never shown in the TV series, and it's pretty important. For this theory, I'm going to say it takes place when Grievous and Darth Sidious arrive on Dathomir to confront Maul and Mother Talzin, who had hijacked Dooku's body. Now, in our timeline, Maul and Talzin are defeated, Maul escapes, but Talzin is killed, and Dooku is returned. But, for this theory, we're going to say that both Sidious and Grievous are both killed by Maul and Talzin. From here, Talzin can continue to pose as Count Dooku, ordering the Separatist attack on Maul's forces on Dathomir to cease. Now, the exact extent of Talzin's Sith magic that she used to take over Dooku's body is not exactly known, but for this theory, we're going to say that she successfully manages to pose as Dooku and takes his place as the head of state of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Now, straight away, this effectively puts Maul in control of one of the two sides of the Clone Wars, which is incredibly impressive. The entire CIS feared and respected Dooku, and would largely follow his orders without question. But now Maul has to deal with the Republic. With Palpatine gone, the Republic will be weakened, it'll be an uproar, but it's still going to be very strong. They still have millions of clones and the Jedi, so Maul will struggle to defeat them even with the backing of the entire CIS. However, electing a new Chancellor would be likely incredibly difficult. Over the previous years, diplomatic relations had been suffering in the Senate between those who supported the war and those who didn't, so there's inevitably going to be a very large power struggle. So how does Maul turn this to his advantage? Well, he can't defeat them through sheer might alone, but he still controls a vast portion of the criminal underworld. His Shadow Collective, which would have remained loyal to him if he defeated Sidious, is going to be more valuable now than it ever was before. These criminal organisations had very deep roots in galactic politics. There were many senators who would gladly sell their souls to the likes of the Black Sun and Pikes if it meant furthering their own political career. The Republic was still considerably corrupt at this point. For this reason, Maul's minions would likely find a senator that they could rely on to carry out their will, and orchestrate them to become somewhat of a hero in the Clone Wars. By controlling the Separatists, they could make this Republic senator, whomever it is, rise to fame, have them organise successful peace talks, and make their political opponents look bad. And failing this, these syndicates would have no problem making opposition disappear. Essentially, Mother Talzin would order the Confederacy to act in a manner that got Maul's Republic puppet elected as Chancellor, for example winning and losing certain battles, making them look good. From here, Maul controls both the Republic and CIS through proxy. Now, he'd likely do away with the Separatist Council. The businessmen who had funded the Confederacy were no longer needed. As well as this, he'd find a way to get rid of the Jedi. They were the most likely to unravel his plot. Not to mention, Maul wants Kenobi dead at all costs. Likely trying to find a way to execute Order 66, as this was the most efficient way of killing the Jedi. Following this, he'd have the two sides make peace. The war was useless when he controlled both factions. The Separatists would rejoin the Republic under the guidance of who they believed to be their leader, Dooku, and Maul would run the galaxy behind the scenes, using his political puppets to give him everything he wanted. Now, I know that Maul technically wouldn't be the Emperor, but he would have total control. If one of his subordinates rebelled, he would likely have them killed or defamed by his other minions. He would be in utter control, but what would that look like? Well, Maul is a considerably deep character. 
What he really wanted was to defeat those who had wronged him, and since Obi-Wan and Sidious were both dead, along with the rest of the Jedi Order and most of his other rivals, he would likely just become consumed by greed. You think you know me? It was I who languished for years, thinking of nothing but you. Nothing but this moment. And now, the perfect tool for my vengeance is in front of us. I never planned on killing you, but I will make you share my pain, Kenobi. <laughs> He would run his criminal empire simultaneously with the rest of the galaxy. With just a twist of his puppet strings, he could change laws and deregulate businesses, such as the spice trade or slave laws, to benefit him and his business partners. Anyone or anything that crossed him would be destroyed by his puppet government or his criminal thugs. Personally, I believe Maul's empire wouldn't necessarily be good or evil. It would simply be a pyramid with him at the top. He wouldn't care what the people did or if they were happy or not, so long as he remained prosperous. But what do you think a galaxy under Maul would look like? Because I'm really interested to know. And do you think the cunning Sith assassin would be able to pull this off? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please remember to like and sub for more as it helps the channel grow and is always really appreciated. Also, follow me on Twitter at the Law Guide to get regular updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.